Let's move on to this now. Back to one of our top stories. Tributes and condolences are pouring in following the news of the death of former Deputy Defense Minister Mlulegi George. He died at the age of 72. The anti-apartheid activist was a founding member of the United Democratic Front, UDF. He left the ANC in 2008 to be part of the formation of the Congress of the People with Musiwa Likota. George will be remembered as a unifying figure in sport. He served as president of Border Rugby Union and chairperson of the South African Football Association. George was also a founding member of the National Sports Council and served on the National Olympic Committee. Joining me now for reflections and a tribute is author and businessman uh, Mkuseli Jack. Thank you for joining me, Mr. Jack. So just tell me about uh, Mluleki George as you knew him. Well, <laughs> uh, Lady George was a robust, combative, combative and forceful, fearless kind of uh, person, a guy that took no prisoners. <laughs> well, his name came to my attention on and around 1978 when he, together with Obu uh, Pilankai and Simon Lonyeni and others, were sentenced to Robben Island. And, of course... Uh, I learned more, like after five years thereafter, when actually we had this bunch of uh, returnees from Robben Island that uh, were quite a lot. And of course, uh, when they came to join our organization or, or student movement, they, they would analyze each and every prisoner, every detainee. And that is how we learn to know about each and every one of the leaders that were behind bars. And if there was a comrade that was also in exile and came back, he will also tell us more about them. Yeah, George was a fighter, and uh, he never gave in easily. But the good news is this. He was a man of integrity. He was a man that believed in the vision of a democratic South Africa. He always stood and was prepared to pay a price, if need be, to, 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 to adhere to the principles of the struggle that we went to Robben Island for. And for that, I really respect him. Yeah, and also he played a role in the UDF, right? And you were also active in the United Democratic Front. His stomping ground was more the border region, whereas, you know, you are more towards the uh, Port Elizabeth uh, dispatch side of things. But I imagine that your paths must have crossed during those days of the UDF and also his activism within the ANC. It, I saw him during that period because, remember, the border at the time, uh, the Eastern Cape was divided into the border area, which uh, included almost the side that uh, the East London area and this other side up to Credo from Port Elizabeth in those areas were falling under the Eastern Cape. So what uh, uh, he, he together with that uh, team of uh, political road filers of the United Democratic Front from the border area, the likes of both Stofil, uh, Metel, uh, and many others, you know, who were all influenced by the time, by the tidal wave of the trade union movement, Sao at the time, on and around that time. So he was part of that. And the robustness I was talking about, I saw it in action on numerous occasions on national meetings. In those days, to us, we were consciously working on a united South Africa. That is why we respect great comrades from wherever they came from, because at the time, what was national was national. There was no such thing as uh, Port Elizabeth, uh, East London, Johannesburg, and so on. So these leaders that today we, we have such high respect especially those who stuck to their guns and who did not allow themselves to be sucked into the temptation of today's politics, make us very proud. Mm. And George, Lulegi George, Uchang is, is one of them. Lastly, Dakusta, talk to me about the intersection between sport and politics in the province of the Eastern Cape and his passion for the transformation, firstly, of the game of rugby, which is a theme that comes up in many, many uh, biographies of 
people who've been activists in the Eastern Cape. Just talk to me about that intersection and, and why it remember, was important in his life and the lives of so many other activists. Remember rugby earlier on was played, uh, you know, effectively in the Cape province. And uh, if you find rugby in Natal, or sorry, in the Transvaal mines in those days, you'll find it in the mines in those days from people who came from here. But on the whole, it was played. So what happened at, at a certain point, uh, our people, our leaders at the time, saw the value of rugby and in their attempt to try and mobilize people around rugby and isolate apartheid South Africa where it hurts most because they realized at the time to Afrikaner, Afrikaners, rugby was sort of close to being a religion. So they put up an alternative uh, rugby structures, which were non-racial, which were democratic, which were progressive, which were anti-apartheid. George found himself deeply in that, and he was at the center of that. And funny enough, uh, Stofile was also one of them. So the border comrades combined the sport and the hardcore dangerous politics of the 1980s and 70s together, and they and they use that as a weapon against the apartheid regime. Koseli Jack, thank you so much for that tribute. Uh, apt words, really, that you use there. I mean, you describe them as political rottweilers, and I don't think there's anything more powerful uh, about the, the role of these activists uh, that has been said thus far. Uh, it really captures uh, their role there.